Okay, so now we're at the bench and these are pretty much all of the parts that I have salvaged so far um, after taking everything out of the respective casings. Uh, so we're starting over here. We have a textbook setup of a Cockoft Walton voltage multiplier, which was out of one of the bug zappers. Uh, this is another power supply from another bug zapper and another Cockoft Walton voltage multiplier. Uh, over here we have a flyback setup which actually came out of a plasma tube. Uh, as you can see here, this pot is for some sort of frequency adjustment. Uh, we have power input at 12 volts on this side. Uh, we also have a sliding pot here which adjusts voltage and this switch here allows you to switch from the off position to the on position to the audio position. Um, I'll show you what that's all about right now actually. We'll plug it in and turn it on. Uh, you can see that the output to the flyback is connected to this neon globe here. Uh, the other end of the globe is not connected, as you can see, it's just single electrode setup. Uh, turning on the 12 volts now, and you'll see the neon light illuminate, constant illumination. If we flick over to the audio, oh, shit. we'll try that again without getting electrocuted. Switching over to audio, you can see now that it only illuminates when the audio frequency is picked up by the microphone which you can see in the middle of your screen there, a little silver thing at the back. Um, we can swap that microphone out for a frequency generator and pump certain frequencies into it um, that might modify the output of this flyback. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can do and this is highly adjustable because we've got that frequency adjustment back there and the voltage adjustment here. It only goes up to 2 kilovolts, but um, yeah, it's a good little unit to play around with anyway. We'll turn that off and move on. Uh, over here, I've got the heating and cooling element on an aluminium block with a bit of thermal compound all over it. I've also got this U-shaped permanent magnet and a whole bunch of these little liquid valves um, so they'll come in handy for something I took apart these two relays here mainly just to salvage the magnet wire because it's very thin and it'll come in handy for an experiment that I've got planned um, I've got this power supply or amplifier I should say which came out of a subwoofer uh, it's got ins and outs, so we'll see if that works. I'm sure it does. If it doesn't, then we've definitely got some parts that we can salvage. Got some high voltage diodes there, some other parts tucked away underneath. Nice little heat sink and some other bits and pieces. Now, when I take things apart, I really like to keep as much as I can because everything comes in handy. Um, I mean, I found this inline filter. Uh, that'll come in handy for something. I've got a ballast here, some connection blocks, um, heating and voltage insulation, tubing there. Um, you know, I keep everything I can, as you can see. I've got everything from springs here to little rocker switches. If I find some special sorts of screws, I'll keep them. You know, I've kept some stainless steel. Nuts and bolts there. Get some zoom action. And we've also I also kept these because these look like brass torque screws. Um, these came out of the Morantz unit, so I thought I'd keep these because there was a few of them. Um, the other thing I found was this little gas fitting, 90 degree fitting. Uh, got a few heat sinks over here and a few thermal fuses. 
the one that I'm very happy about finding was, if I can, can we zoom, can we zoom, here we go, that's a um, 75 degree 5 amp thermal fuse, um, so that's pretty handy to have because usually they're um, you know, 100, 150, 200 degrees Celsius. It's good to have a, um, a low temperature, high current thermal fuse. I haven't had one of these yet, so I'm happy about that. Um, the other thing I found was this cool motor. Get some zoom action on here. You can see the shaft on this. It's got a threaded end. Decent diameter shaft. Uh, it's got a fan cooling system built in to the main shaft on the back here. Um, we've got a speed selector switch and an on and off switch. Okay, I'll turn this motor on now. Um, I've got to hold it down because it's got that much torque in it that you can hear the speed as I um, flip the switch now. <laughs> So as you can see, it's a pretty powerful little motor. Um, so we'll probably end up mounting that in one of the um, rotary mechanical spark gap generators that I'm going to rebuild. Uh, I think we'll use this to drive one of those. Uh, the other one I've got a, another plan for, so we'll, um, we'll talk about that another time. It my garage is a bit of a mess. There's screws and bits and pieces of wire everywhere, all over the floor. I've got a big pile of rubbish here that I've got to get rid of. And there is not much room left on my bench, as you can see. Uh, but one thing I have been doing, even though I haven't been doing much experimenting because of all of this, is by request, I went and purchased some distilled water, high quality, and you can see conductivity at 25 degrees is 1.8 micro siemens per centimetre. Um, I've got the uh, carbon fibre plates cleaned out in distilled water and then I put them in the distilled water in the same configuration. I uh, haven't run any tests on it yet but it's all ready to go. Um, keeping the old dirty water from the um, from the spring water bottles in here for future experiments but you can see at the base there right around the rim at the bottom a dark ring that ring is actually the sediment forming from the um, carbon that has been stripped off the carbon fiber electrodes from the high current. So I don't think it's a voltage related phenomenon. I think it's more likely a current related phenomenon. Um, I can make high voltage through these carbon fiber plates for days at a time and um, I won't see any deterioration. As soon as I start pumping some amps through them um, that's when we start getting deterioration. So um, we will continue to try and prove that theory, but um, I'm sticking to that at the moment. I think I'm right. Well, I better get back to all this down and desoldering all the parts that we want to salvage. Um, the sooner we can do that, the sooner we can get back to running some experiments. Uh, thanks for watching.